And so same things happening to Trump, right? We're being lied into war. I think I've said that. And Trudeau says long peace after the second world war is over. And two, fant I've got two really fun Donald Trump stories for the end of the show today. Um, the first one is Donald Trump challenges Biden to a, um, a golf match. And it's funny as heck. I mean, how how do you think Donald Trump can shoehorn plugging his own golf course into his presidential campaign? Well, he did it. So we'll watch that. And the crowd erupts into, we love you, Donald Trump. Politicians, if you're a politician and you show up somewhere and, and you're just going to shit talk your opponents all the time, like you're going to just shit talk your opponents for two hours and the crowd erupts into, we love you, Chance. You got to feel pretty good if you show up to to talk like you know to to tell people what you're going to do and how terrible your opponents are and they like you so much that they start chanting we love you. I've never seen that in politics. I've never seen anybody but Donald Trump achieve that in politics. If Boris Johnson went out there and was like you know we're going to do this and we're going to do this and the Brits started chanting we love you, that would be newsworthy. People would say that's crazy town. Look at what the reaction to this plan is, right? Nobody reports on this for Trump, but it happens regularly. It's crazy, okay? Nobody gets this. Nobody nobody has a situation where people are chanting, we love you to them. And it doesn't happen again and again and again. It's absolutely crazy. So I think that that's one of those things. It's stand out. It's very interesting. There's lots to go too. Let's get to it first. I like memes. I think this is interesting. This is one of those things that... Um, visually you can tell a story that takes me a long a longer time to explain but this meme has france rest in peace right and an islamic guy digging a grave for england as well and i i would hazard like i would say canada is right alongside them the united states is right alongside them this is a plan coming to fruition as we watch and we are watching standing by kind of with our fingers in our nose thinking i hope this doesn't happen here as it's happening here. <laughs> and so I think these memes are very powerful. And do you know, they're going to, they have to remove a lot of people. How do you remove a lot of people who won't take your mandated jab? Well, you start a war and you send them to the war to die in the trenches in the war, right? However that works, you either destroy their mind or you destroy their body or some combination thereof. And then either they die there or they come back and, and they're not the same as they were. They're not a you know strong family man or anything like that. And maybe they are, but by and large, there's a lot of damage that happens with war, especially people who've been injured one way or the other. And so that has been used before to great effect. And they're trying to use it now. And they're trying to use the age old trick of, this horrible thing happened to children. We can't let that happen. Let's go save the kids. And it's a lie. It's a lie. So here's Garnet Genius. He's making the case. It's four minutes long. So we're not going to listen to all of it. He's making the case that Canada has to, has to save Ukraine because Russia is now bombing children's hospitals. Okay. Doesn't that remind you of the news out of Gaza? Actually, looking up this US missile thing, I had a lot of posts pop up talking about how it was U.S. missiles or there was questions around whether an Israeli hospital or a Gaza hospital was actually bombed or if there was mis like confusion about the reality of the whole situation. So I found that interesting, that, that interplay interesting. But anyway, July 8th, Jackson says, Ukraine blew up their own children's hospital in Kiev this morning with an American air defense missile. Stop sending these terrorists bombs. Yeah. Heath says... Uh, he's responding to the Department of Defense. Department of Defense says Russian attack on Kiev hospital highlights Ukrainians' needs as NATO summit begins. Good timing, right? Good good thing this really, really um, emotional thing happened. The kids' hospital? Who targets a kids' hospital, right? Heath says, except, of course, it was a U.S. Patriot missile that struck the Kiev hospital, not a Russian missile. And naturally, Ukraine lied about about it to demand more weapons from America. And why do we know that? Oh, there's a footage. Interesting, right? And I mean, like, take it with a grain of salt. The internet is a crazy place. This could be footage from a video game, okay? So take it with a grain of salt. Always take it with a grain of salt. Come to your own conclusions, but be aware of what's going on. Um, Simplicus says, I'm still shocked everyone is arguing over the shape of this missile, which from certain angles can look relatively similar to both the KH-101 and a NASM AIM-120, rather than the clear effect of its explosion, which points indisputably, indisputably to the AIM-120. Look closely to see how, uh, to see how, sorry, hold on. 
Look closely and see how as soon as the missile impacts, a multitude of tiny flashes can be seen hitting the outer face of the hospital wall. These are fragments from a fragmentation warhead missile that explodes with small shrapnel pellets, which the AIM-120 does. Further proof is established in the close-up photos of the hospital's outer facade, which shows many tiny per perforations and chipped out of brick from the fragments. This, beyond a shadow of a doubt, favors the AIM-120 explanation over the KH-101. So Russian versus American. And um, Heath says... Uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, Mar Maria says, so it was a U.S. air-to-air -air missile that hit the Children's Hospital in Kiev, not a Russian cruise KH-101, which makes sense since the hospital is still standing. A cruise missile would have demolished it to the ground. I, not that I think that's indisputable, but hey, everybody who knows about cruise missiles and stuff, can you let us know in the comments if a cruise missile would destroy just a building like a hospital? And this missile looks much smaller caliber. Caliber is probably the wrong word um, than than a cruise missile, right? So to me, there's questions. The, to me, you're not saying, you know, like, listen up, everybody, we're going to war over this, right? To me, this stinks like you don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. Here's CPC and Garnet Genius. His tweet says, the world has been shocked again by new images of Russian state war crimes in Ukraine. With renewed urgency, the government of Canada should stop dithering, deliver weapons, and end their sanctions, loopholes, and invest in our own military here at home. So we're going to go to war. And the CPC is going to say, we have a strong mandate to go and protect Ukraine. Really, that's what this is. Here. Friends, uh, the world is becoming increasingly unstable. As I've said before, we are in a new Cold War. Tensions continue to sharpen between the democratic and the authoritarian world. And today we had another stark reminder of what this conflict is all about. Uh, today, Russia blasted the largest children's hospital in Kyiv and rained missiles down on other cities across Ukraine. Akhmadit is a... Who? Which cities? What? ...major hospital which provides cancer treatment, among many other services. So I've seen images and videos of children doing their chemotherapy, literally then being moved onto the street in Kyiv. One of the missiles after the hospital was bombed with a Russian cruise missile. So after that, they loaded kids up on on, on um, gurneys and took them out into the street. That's, you know, that's what you do after your hospital gets hit with a Russian cruise missile. So I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. And I'm very, very concerned that the CPC is going to use this as an excuse to take us to war because, you know, war is the thing. And here's Justin Trudeau saying the, the post-World War II peace is over. Over. That's what he says. Gov.exe says, Trudeau says, post-World War II peace is over as countries have to deal with the threat of climate, cyber warfare, Clim climate, okay, climate, stop, cyber warfare, different, not climate and cyber warfare, which, which is how I read it, um, and the rise of authoritarians. But Canadians can count on him to protect individual rights, liberties, and democracy. Justin Trudeau has a PhD in gaslighting. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, the part where he says... World War II peace is over is after the minute. So there's a minute and a half, Justin Trudeau warning. Here we go. NATO is the strongest military alliance in the world. And to keep it that way, we must continue to step up individually and collectively to strengthen both our alliance and the collective peace it represents and protects. Canada stands with our NATO allies. Canada will always defend the values of democracy, freedom, and the rule of law, as it is more important today than it has ever has been. My friends, we must be... Than it has ever has been? Mm -hmm. ...be clear-eyed about the current state of global affairs. The long peace after the Second World War is over. We're living in an increasingly dangerous, unstable, and complex world. Cyber warfare, resurgent authoritarian forces, expanding regional conflicts, and everywhere increasing impacts of climate change all represent growing threats to our collective security and our continued prosperity. This is a sobering reality we must all face. That's why Canada will continue to work closely with like-minded allies to tackle these challenges directly, to build a better world for all. We will grow our global partnerships, and we will always do what is needed to forge a stronger, more united NATO and to keep us 
all safe. Nonsense. NATO is not being utilized the way it was intended to be utilized. They've changed it from a defensive agreement to an offensive, aggressive army. And that's not good. And it's an army with no country to fight for. They fight for NATO globalists, right? Sprinter says, Ukraine with NATO support will stop Russia, says Biden. I don't think so. I've got I've got news about Modi and, and Putin down here in BRICS. And Russia and the rest of the world is very well insulated actually now and very well positioned to deal with just shutting off the United States completely. Maybe, maybe not. But I think that they're insulated. I mean, the sanctions, et cetera, that have, they've been under for a long time drove them to create BRICS. And BRICS has been embraced because of the way the US uses their f- currency as a weapon. And because of Ukraine, the United States hasn't been able to really respond to how popular BRICS has been in the last four years since COVID and Ukraine and all the other wars that have happened. And everything that they've done, it seems like um, blowing up Nord Stream, all of the other things that they've done to win Ukraine have just weakened the West. The sanctions just weakened the West. All of these things that they've done have screwed them over to the point where they're so pot committed in Ukraine, they can't leave. But also at the same time, there's this other system that's being set up around them and they can't stop it they're too, they're overcommitted in Ukraine. And so I, I find that very interesting. And I've been talking about that for a while. And like, I, I think that fundamentally with the expansion of BRICS, with bringing Modi in, Modi and Xi and Putin all working together and trading, you don't need the United States at that point in time. Like if the United States says, we're really mad, rah, 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 you can look around at India and China and Russia and go, oh, well, <laughs> I guess I guess the U.S. is mad again, right? Like, does Joe Biden is Joe Biden shit himself again, right? Like, nobody cares because of the of what the United States has done over the last few years, and that's real. I mean, all of that is really, really interesting. I think that it's it's not good for Canada, but the West has put themselves politically in that position, right? And like, I don't think there's any denying it. It's not like the West is in a strong position right now. So, and, and we're getting weaker. Everything we do weakens, our, weakens us. Look at our military. Holy smoke, right? Like, do you want to wear a dress? You're promoted. You're promoted, sir. I mean, ma'am, wink, right? Like, come on. So it's crazy. So what's going to happen? They're going to lie us into war and then to, to remove the population and replace us wholesale with a population that's more compliant, I guess. Uh, Sprinter says, Britain is giving Ukraine permission to launch launch strikes with storm shadow cruise missiles deep into Russian territory. Bloomberg referring to the new defense minister, Starmer. So is Starmer the defense minister and the prime minister? That's interesting. Um, Interesting for a labor government, right? Like, yes, we definitely want to use uh, cruise missiles firing from Ukraine, from, from Britain, armed from Britain into Ukraine, into Russia. That sounds like a great idea. It sounds like Britain's going to go to war before we do. And we'll go, we'll go to a sympathetic war, but who's starting this war, right? They used American air to air missiles to say, oh yeah, the Russians definitely fired a cruise missile at our, at our hospital. So now we can fire cruise missiles at theirs. It's a lie, right? It's a lie, but here we are. All right. Randy Hillier, who's a former MPP uh, member of provincial parliament in Ontario. It's like an MLA. And he is responding and he's uh, been treated very poorly by the Ford government, by everybody, period. Um, he's he's not deserved what he's got, but he's still fighting as well. And he's responding to Justin Trudeau's statement at the NATO summit that the Second World War, the peace after the Second World War is over. It's only over because the globalists want it to be over. They need a war. But Randy says, a competent and honest leader of Canada would use the NATO summit to declare and assert that Canada regards and upholds that NATO is a defensive alliance. Canada will not equip nor facilitate any war in foreign lands except when a NATO country is attacked. Canada will oppose the addition of any new member country to NATO. Canada will freely trade with any country determined to be in Canada's interest and will not comply with NATO economic sanctions. Canada welcomes dialogue with Russia and seeks to help end the needless killing in Ukraine. Canada recognizes the self-determination of all people and reaffirms our commitment to uphold the ideals of the Atlantic Charter. Um, I would make Randy. I would make Randy Hillier my foreign, my foreign, my foreign affairs minister. Yep, in a heartbeat. Go fix Russia, Randy. But honestly, to me, that sounds like a rational, competent, normal plan that you would expect from a statesperson, like a, somebody whose job it was to to go and negotiate and discuss people, discuss with people how we're going to solve problems. 
uh, from a Canadian perspective, but collaboratively, right? Like if you've got an issue with, I don't know, France being communist or something like that, like what are we going to do about this, right? And I mean, you got to save yourself, man. You can't just walk in and say, we're going to free you, France. Although you can arrest communists who have been traitors to the West. You can clean out the United Nations, the WHO. You can shut them down, you know, stop all that because it is a, it is a war. Uh, but again, you can't, you can't fix other countries, right? If somebody came into Canada and said, I know how to, you know, I, I know how to deal with this. Same with Haiti, right? Like, look what's going on with Haiti. Oh, I know how to fix this. I'll help you. You gotta, we have to fix it ourselves. We have to. It's, it is our responsibility for crying out loud. And people are sitting around waiting for somebody to take the responsibility and to, to do it. And the people who have are systemically destroyed. And that's what's stopping anybody else from picking up the mantle, right? And that's, that's interesting. Leader McConnell, McConnell, Mitch McConnell says, welcome Justin Trudeau to the U.S. Capitol today. Shared values and close economic ties have always been the strength of U.S.-Canada relationship, but it's time for our northern ally to invest seriously in the hard power required to help preserve prosperity and security across NATO. And again, I think we should just listen to Randy and uh, stop funding NATO and all of the other globalist BS. Because the globalists are trying to use climate change and this war and all of the rest to take further control of society and people and more fine-grained control of society and people. Post Millennials reporting Justin Trudeau says it's indisputable that climate change is one of the defining security issues of our time. And that just means we're going to go to war against climate change. And so you can't dispute it because climate change is something we're at war with. So if you say we shouldn't be at war with climate change, well, you're the problem or whatever. And that'll unlock all sorts of other funding options and, and all sorts of other stuff that they can then launder to other people who aren't taxpayers in the West, right? If you pay taxes and they take the money and send it and spend it in Ukraine, then you've washed the tax dollars out of the West and, and given it to Ukrainian oligarchs or whoever whoever's benefiting from all this money. It's not Ukrainians or it's not the population of Ukraine, I don't think. They're, they're as much victims here as we are. Anyway, Justin Trudeau says that climate change is really, really bad and we should send more money to whoever he says. No. Canada and NATO have long recognized an indisputable fact. Climate change is not only an existential environmental threat, but one of the defining security issues of our time. Le Canada et l'OTAN savent depuis longtemps que les changements climatiques sont... So, they, they want to cast this as a security issue. Here's Dan McTeague, and he's responding to Stephen Galbeau. Galbeau says, results are in. The June heat was... The June heat waves in central and eastern Canada were 7 to 10 degrees above average due to climate change. Oh, it's a good thing they know that, right? Give me a break. The The number of things they've claimed and then when asked for actual data, they don't have any data to back it up is too damn high. Environment Canada is now assessing how human-caused climate change impacts severe weather. Stay informed on recent findings to protect your health and home. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And Dan says, BS, a few days mid-June, but the rest of the month was cool and wet in eastern Canada. Or do you think we have short memories, Stephen Gelbo? While in the topic of your... Sp spreading disinformation and misinformation, any updates on the $30 billion you're taking in carbon taxes? So very interesting that we pay carbon taxes and we don't get health care and all, all we get is further punishment, right? Like, oh, look, here's a heat wave and you know that's why you're paying carbon taxes. Bull, absolute nonsense. They're going to do the same thing in the United Kingdom. Department for Energy Security and Net Zero says climate change and energy expert Stark Climate has been appointed to head our new clean power mission control tasked with turbocharging the shift from volatile fossil fuel markets to homegrown clean power by 2030. Like, listen to that marketing. Oh, homegrown clean power just sounds so good, right? It's a shame. It's a fantasy. Like, National Grid says, actually, it's not a fantasy. You could do LNG, I suppose, or you could do oil and gas. That would be homegrown, clean, reliable power, right? But it would also be fossil fuels. But the idea that solar power, is, solar power, wind, whatever they're putting in the water is somehow going to replace fossil fuels 
is a fantasy. Why is it a fantasy? Let me tell you. The fantasy is because they don't have any examples of a working grid. They don't have 100 people working, living on a fully solar, fully wind grid. They don't have 1,000 people li living on it. They don't have 10,000 people living on it. They don't have 100,000 people living on it. And if you can't scale, if you can't do it, if you can't put 100 people on, here's your solar panel and your piece of land, live in this 100% green community, we'll power the grocery stores and everything with the solar panels and the wind. If you can't do that, then you can't roll this out. And they damn well know it, and they're never going to do it. It's, it's not going to be successful. National Grid says accelerating. And the point is for not, it not to be successful. The point is for us to live with a lower, reduced standard of living, with power outages, and with big houses occupied by multiple families, and with big houses chopped up into fourplexes. That's the plan. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to achieve. And they're achieving their goals economically. You can't afford your house, so you have to chop it up into a fourplex and rent it out to three other families just so you can afford to manage it. Okay? That's the point. That's how they're going to do it. They're not going to convince you that it's climate change. They're just going to make it so economically unviable that you follow their, here's what you do when you can't afford your house anymore. And that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. National Grid in the UK says, accelerating the decarbonization of the UK's energy system is critical to bring bills down in the long term, create new jobs and unlock economic growth across the country. Innovation, collaboration, and urgency are key to achieving this. And we are looking forward to working closely with the government, uh, OF, GEM, and industry stakeholders as part of the government's mission control. So this is all, all control. It's all about control. And they will take control and they will not give it back. And you will look at what's happened in Calgary. I think the pipe's fixed. <laughs> and they're still, they still have the water restrictions in place. Kevin is talking about healthcare. And he says um, two, two of Calgary's hospitals are on um, diversion. So Parksy says real-time evidence. Two of Calgary's hospitals are on diversion tonight. Not one, two. This means all general surgery cases have to overload remaining sites. Please continue to seek care if you need emergency department, but government must must fix this. How about the government stops collecting taxes for something for a service they can't provide, and then you open it up to people who can provide the service, and you just pay them and maybe get insurance? Because at this point, it's very, very clear that the government is a danger to the society, and they're not providing the care that they're supposed to provide, even though we're paying the taxes right? Holly Doan, let's talk about traitors in our government before we have a grab bag of governance. And um, Holly Doan says, Elections Canada now tells China the Chinese in Korea knew of at least 149 complaints of foreign interference in the last two general elections. The agency took or the agency two years ago assured MPs it was unaware of any claims for of foreign agents that were at work. Oh, you mean Chinese agents? Well, Ping here just mentioned that, yeah, we do have some things that qualify. Honestly, what? So Quebec RCMP have also opened up an investigation into this. We're actively investigating allegations of criminal activities related to Chinese foreign interference in Quebec. Report any forms of threats, harassment, or intimidation anonymously from the Chinese Communist Party. So yay, the RCMP are kind of doing their job. But again, I have zero confidence in the RCMP because they've flubbed every investigation from the last at least six years, probably the last 10, probably more. The video that goes along with this RCMP thing talking about the foreign interference is in is in Chinese. I think it's Mandarin. Um, and it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of creepy. Here we go. Says, have you been the victim of threats, harassment, or intimidation by Chinese government officials? So there you go. And then it says you can get in touch, right? Blah, 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 blah. So that's interesting, right? Like that's, I mean, I guess meet people where they're at, right? If you've got a bunch of people who are who are probably fluent in Mandarin and maybe not so good in English, sure do that. I'm all for stopping Chinese interference. It just seems an interesting strategy where we have information from CSIS telling us specifically, right? With names and everything. And like, it seems like the police are casting a very broad net, whereas we have some very specific things to investigate. And it seems like they're not interested in that. They just want public, you know, people are being threatened, you know, have, have something to do. So I don't know. It seems like, again, they're pretending, they're pretending to solve a problem where really 
They're just, you know, moving chairs around and, and not actually solving an issue. Here's a grab bag of governance. Let's do that. The Liberal Party is just like, man, I hate common sense. Don't you hate common sense? I hate common sense so much. Here is their their video. And they, the tweet just has eyes. And it's got Donald Trump and Pierre Polyev. And it's got the headlines that's that highlight this one says a return to common sense so here's donald trump and pierre polyev talking about common sense and the liberals think you're gonna you're gonna hate this you're just gonna you're gonna see red right oh my gosh these two guys raw i can't believe them common sense mm. a thing called common sense common sense common sense common sense with a party of common sense common sense of the common people common sense common sense plan An old-fashioned american common sense common sense conservative prime minister conservative person with common sense common sense you know we're really the party of common sense using a common sense law common sense right common sense the republican party really is the party of common sense common sense the party of common sense it's a common sense step common sense is common sense and that's what we need it's common sense the thing called common sense common so <laughs> it just made me think of this meme right like the i hate thinking me too let's just trust the government okay it seems very very strange it's not a very there are a lot of people who are pushing back and saying you guys understand that this is a cell phone right like you guys are making yourselves look dumb here anyway it's funny because they're so dumb but again they're very effective at maintaining their seats i don't want to i don't want to minimize or minimize 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 or um underestimate the liberals because at this point they're communists and they'll do anything to win. And they've been very effective up till now at saying anything, doing anything, and maintaining their majority, maintaining their stranglehold on this country. So on one side of things, I think that political moves like that look very, very stupid, right? And it makes them look stupid. But on the other side of things, you have to look at their success and say, holy, sm holy smoke, like they're stealing it, but everybody's buying it. And so there's... How do they do that? Not that there's there's talent in that. They're stealing it. They're they're getting away with with completely undermining and utilizing our system for their own ends and means. And yet, nobody seems capable of doing anything about it. And it's not just in Canada, it's everywhere. And that seems so crazy to me. Are they legitimately am I getting it wrong? Are they not stealing it? Are they legitimately winning this and we're all legitimately voting for our our complete end and we've just decided that we're all going to be communists now and if you say anything else you should go to the gulag? Is that like if I just missed it? <laughs> like, holy smoke. Um Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.